Thank you for joining us. My name is Jay Clifford, a developer advocate for Influx Data. I'm joined by Paul Dix, our CTO and creator of InfluxDB. So Paul, we're gonna talk about Rust, one of your favorite subjects. Um, what I wanted to break into at the beginning was, you know, 1.x was Go, 2.x was Go. So why the move to Rust? And can you sort of explain a little bit about what about Rust that made you want to switch? Yeah, so when we looked at what we wanted to accomplish with InfluxDB 3.0, basically what we were looking at was a re-architecture of the entire database, the underlying way that it organizes data and how it actually works. And we realized that we'd be rewriting a significant chunk of it. So given that we were looking at this in the beginning of 2020, as opposed to 2013 when we first created InfluxDB, uh, we wanted to think about what other tools we could use. And Rust as a programming language was way more mature in 2020 than it was in 2013. Obviously, 1.0 of Rust didn't come out till 2015. Uh, and it just had a number of properties that I thought would make it a perfect choice for a system like a database, like a real-time time series columnar database. So, so is it, if it, can you jump into a few of those sort of before, is it, is it performance gains? Is it overall clean code? What's the, what's some of those benefits that you see for us? Yeah. So there were a number of specific things that uh, we had in mind and th there were a few that I thought would be important that actually didn't end up being important. So memory safety, which Rust has is super important. Of course you have that in other languages like Go, uh, but there's no garbage collector, right? And we have like performance and speed are very, very critical in Rust and you have zero cost abstractions, which makes it so that you can get exceptional performance on performance critical things like a database. Uh, I'll also, I'm a very big fan of the way error handling is done in Rust. Uh, crates, the pack packaging system is really good. Um, and finally, the thing that kind of pushed me over the edge was in the fall of 2019, the async await stuff landed in Rust. And when that happened, I thought, okay, now we can build server software that has a lot of network IO uh, and we can do it efficiently. Um, the one thing that I thought would be important at the time was Rust makes it so that you can import C and C++ libraries with zero cost, right? In Go, you pay the cost of the C Go bridge, but with Rust, you could use those libraries and have it not you know, cost a bunch of translation. Uh, I, at that time, I thought it would be important because I thought we may end up using another open source uh, query processing library, data library uh, that would be written in C or C++. But we actually ended up landing on a Rust native solution called Data Fusion. So, sort of rounding this off, then, is there any features that you're missing Go, or are you all in on Rust? Uh, I mean, I love Go as a language. The thing that I love most, two things I love most about Go. One, it's very easy to learn, it's easy to use. I think it's a very user friendly language. Uh, the compile times in Go can't be beat, obviously. That's probably the thing I missed the most, but at this stage, I'm all in on Rust. I think it is the perfect language in you know 2023 for designing performance critical server applications, system software. Uh, and I think that's gonna be the case for you know the next 10 to 20 years. I think we're going to see more and more system software written in Rust and gradually a translation of all these libraries and things that are written in C and C++ are going to have more and more code written in Rust as they evolve and get stuff added to them. Incredible. Paul, thank you for your time. And thank you all for joining us. We cannot wait to see what you're going to build with 3.0.